Last week we talked about what a market is, where it's a place that buyers and sellers can meet to agree to the terms of a transaction. But we started to drift into what an index is. It's a very natural drift, but Mike, could you elaborate for us more on yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. When we talked about that, obviously, the question that people ask is, you know, how's the market doing? It's really a question about an index, specifically the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That's usually what people are asking. And um, so it's natural that that's the conversation that we're having. Um, but I'll just step back here and, and talk about what exactly an index is. Webster defines an index as um, something that leads one to a particular fact or conclusion about something as an indicator. And so an index is really, in, as it pertains to investing, an attempt to get an indication of how uh, a market is doing, not just the stock market, but all kinds of markets. So tell me about that, because you mentioned the Dow, yep. but like you said, there are a lot of different indexes. Share with us some of those yeah, different absolutely. indexes. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average is often referenced as often as it is, uh, primarily because it's one of the oldest, I think mm -hmm. the second oldest. Um, it was first calculated in 1896, I think, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. And so uh, one of the things that gives an index relevance is how long it's been as a relative you know, way to calculate or to compare where it was versus where it is today. Sure. Um, but there's, you know, it's just 30 stocks, it's just the U.S. stock market, and it's just about the industrial sector of the U.S. stock market. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to know better about how the U.S. stock market was doing, you know, you might just make a jump to the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. That would be another one. Um, but a lot of organizations calculate these things. And I think that's important to know. Um, Dow Jones calculates the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Standard & Poor's calculates the S&P 500. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and so on and so forth. A lot of these organizations calculate these things to try to gauge markets or what they think is a good representation of the market. I, I referenced Morgan Stanley. Um, they calculate one that's often used to figure out or estimate how uh, developed markets are performing. The EFI index, Europe, Asia, and the Far East. Also emerging markets. Um, Barclays often uh, has indexes to calculate how bond markets are doing. And, and you can get a lot more granular than that. Well, that's a lot to digest. Yeah. But if you could bring us home on that. What's the value, what's the key takeaway that uh, an investor should take away from the concept of an index? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, again, this conversation is really easy to reference, um, you know, benchmarking. We're gonna talk more about that in, in one of our subsequent videos, um, but I'll just touch on that real briefly. The whole relevance, I think, that people, that, that, that comes out of this idea of trying to measure what a market is doing is designed to see how your portfolios are doing compared to market. So we'll unpack that a little bit more. I think my key takeaway that I want people that I would want people to understand about indexing in general is that there's a lot there there are a lot of markets. Mm -hmm. There's US stock market, there's developed international markets, there's emerging markets, there's bond markets, there's commodities, real estate, and then again you can get very granular. But I think ultimately, and we don't expect clients to do this, that's one of the reasons that clients have advisors. But the more that people understand some of this, the more that they become empowered. And knowledge is power, and it helps to alleviate fear and uncertainty, which ideally should make a person a better investor.